Hello everybody, welcome back to A Slice of Gaming. I'm the only Pi 3 and 4. This is Super Mario Bros. 3 from the Nintendo Entertainment System, and this game is brought to you by GameAnyone.com. Now what we can do here in Desert Land, we can go one of two ways now. This game will do this quite often, giving you a choice of the two worlds you want to go through. It did this right at this point too, I just forgot to mention it, that you could do either World 4, or you could do either World 5. I'm going to do World 5 next, just to kind of go in more order. This will introduce a very familiar character to this game. I believe this might be his first appearance, I'm not 100% sure of that, but I believe it is though. This guy is the Chain Chomp. Some of you might notice him from, uh, well, Super Mario uh, N6 for the 64. He was in there, I'm pretty sure. He's in Double Dash, he's in a lot of games now, he's in a Legend of Zelda game for some reason. We can actually get rid of him, I think, with a raccoon tail, but I'm not 100% sure of that. I don't believe we can. Actually, if you just kind of wait here for a while, he'll actually just break off his chain eventually, so... Something that's kind of a weird, interesting thing that just kind of happens. It takes about a few minutes, though, but you'll see it happening eventually, so we just want to be very careful of him as we continue on here. We can get the items there if we really wanted to. It's kind of like suicide, though. But there's a power-up right here that we can get anyways. And that's what this turtle is used for, that you can either get the kill the chain shop or get the power up with him. Now, this world will feature something a little bit different. You get these blocks here, and you also get the first vine secret of the game as well. It's going to be coming up right in here. Now, with this turtle shell, you want to release him towards that particular angle, towards this way, you want to shoot him. And you'll get the very first fine secret of the game. You can climb up here, and I believe there's a pipe up here, which leads to some more coins. Ah, oh, the good old clouds with smiles on them. Something that Mario always has, as everything seems to have a happy little smiley face on him. Now for this, you want to go under here. Kind of clear out the way a little bit here. And the power-up is going to be right in here, so you want to make sure not to destroy this block here. You just kind of want to make your way through. There we go. And get all the coins in this particular little secret. Now this block here, as you can notice, is a flower up. First I thought it was a one up, but they actually fixed this in the Game Boy Advance one where it actually will stay a block instead of being a coin instead. So it just kind of reveals a little bit more here. There's a power up right in here that we can get. We can come down here, hopefully I won't land into a hole. Very good. And we'll finish off the level with a last minute chain chomp. Now this game became so popular, this series became so popular that it released uh, actually an animation series that was, you know, based on this game. I say based very, very loosely, by the way. It has the Koopalings, it has, you know, the different Bowsers, and not well, the different Bowser, it just has the one Bowser, but loosely it has the power-ups. Um, the stories are kind of not based on this game itself. It uses the sound effects from this game, but other than that, it's just pretty much, well, just kind of like a money maker for Nintendo. And you know what? It works. It's actually a pretty funny show, I must admit. Captain Lua Bono, and I believe it's Danny West that plays Luigi. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I'm going to have to look up that. But they played Mario and Luigi in the original Mario series as well, and I'm glad they brought them back for it. It's one of those shows that are just very corny, but a lot of kids grew up on. Now this world is a little bit annoying without the raccoon tail. If you don't have the raccoon tail, you're going to have to make do with the buzzy biddles that are walking back and forth here to open up the new paths. With the raccoon tail, you can just jump up and break the blocks at will. But with those guys, you have to time your jumps, time it coming back as well, too. And this game will also introduce something very particularly strange about these buzzy biddles. And as you can see, since I lost my raccoon tail, I'm going to have to use these guys now. Of course, I aimed it the wrong way. Let's try it again. Come on, get up there. There we go. You can only open up one block if you really need to. Now, something they kind of screwed up on in this game is, as you can see, those stars up above here. I had to stop that noise. Those stars up above, right above my head, are a slightly different color. I wonder why. There's actually a block here. They fixed that in the Mario Advance one as well, too, where that block deck didn't actually show anything. Now, for this particular stage here, you want to open up these two things, 
get all the coins that you can, and then you open up the P block, which is right underneath here. Now, if you have the raccoon tail, you can actually open this part up here. I don't think I can actually get in here without it, so that just shows you where that P block is to get a few more coins if, if you nearly need more men and more coins. Now this is the part of the game I was mentioning, but these buzzy beetles and spinies later on in the game that we'll be seeing will actually be upside down on the roof. Something that's just very strange and unusual. And I don't think they actually did that in any other game that I really remember. They might have done it in Galaxy, but I honestly can't remember off the top of my head here. Now, before we finish off this level, we have to take care of him. And of course, we'll be getting ourselves yet another free man. I've got 19 men so far. Now, there's also another secret in this game that we can get. Make sure you kill that hammer brother that has the hammer that we just recently got. Go into your inventory, use the hammer at this particular point, you can go through here. This will show off a secret of the game. This hammer brother down below me is an asshole, and I'll show you why after I get this toad house. Now, in this particular toad house, it will introduce one of the new Mario suits that we'll be using quite a bit in the next stage here. It's the frog suit. I think no matter which chest you pick, you'll get it no matter what. Now, this guy down here, he is an asshole, and I don't like him. I'm going to be using my Starman right here, but he'll give us a very handy item. Now these guys are called Fire Brothers, and if you have a little bit of difficulty, you can actually get the Fire Flowers as well to kill those guys rather easily. Now these guys will have a nice reward, another Warp Whistle. And it is actually possible now that we have two Warp Whistles, we can skip right to World 8 if we so desire to. However, I'm not going to be doing that, so those Warp Whistles are not going to be doing anything but taking up room in my inventory. Now, on to the next airship. Oh, it's terrible! The king has been transformed! Please find the magic wand so we can change him back! He's a spider this time. Now I believe each uh, airship will actually change color, I'm pretty sure. Now something I noticed, what is this thing at the bottom here? What is that? Is that where the hook came from? I'm going to assume so. Now I believe this for this particular airship, it just has quite a bit of cannons in it. There's no real interesting secrets here that I really remember. Somehow I remember this airship being having that stupid thing that I'm thinking of. I think this world actually has the moles as well. I'm thinking of that thing that you jump on that was redone in Mario Wii, or the Super Mario Brothers for the Wii, that you have to jump on and it's like a screw thing. I honestly hated that thing so much. The thing was annoying. Where did I go? There I am. I think this game, I think this one introduces the moles. I hope I'm right. I think it's actually right at this point here. There they are. These guys make a return back in Super Mario Galaxy as well. It's actually possible to get yourself a free man here as well. As you can see, they'll throw tiny little wrenches that can actually damage you. Now, in some of these airships, they'll actually be lucky enough to have like a little block here in case you need it. But we're finding our next Koopaling here. Who is... Morton! No, yeah, it's Morton. Now, something that was interesting about these Koopalings here, they're actually named after singers, and each one of the designers from Nintendo got to design each and every one of them. So each one could be different and unique. Catch it in midair? Yes. I'm not too sure who Morton is renamed after, but there's a girl Koopaling in particular, Wendy O. Koopa, who's named after Wendy O. Williams, the rock star. And of course, Iggy Koopa, who's named after Iggy Pop. Alright, now that we saved your ass, give me an item. Oh, thank heavens, I'm back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here is a letter from the princess. You can stop the, your enemies using the Karibo shoe. I've enclosed a tool that will help protect you. And we get a Jugum's Claw, which is another useless item, I think, in the game, unless you're intending to skip things. Uh, the Karibo shoe is not going to be something that's going to be important until, like, World 5. But at least she told us about it. Now, I'm going to start off this level when I come back, so I'll catch you guys later. See ya!